e-bikes are fun, e-mountain bikes even funner, and when they're full suspension and they have a mid-based torque drive for under $1,000, well, that's tops like this e-ride mid-drive mountain from Hyper, available off and on from Walmart. Right now, off, haven't seen them in a while. But this particular one is one of my two and it's been loaned out and he lost the magnet recently. I talked about that. The humble wheel magnet. And I had a title on that. Check this before it falls off. It will ruin your e-mountain bike fun because e-mountain bikes are super fun until you don't have power. And when there's no power, they're just heavy dead weight. So you definitely want the motor to work. You want the power to be able to turn off and on. And on this bike, the magnet very critical for it working. While it is a torque-based mid-drive, meaning your pedals and your strength on the pedals are what dictates the motor off and on, without a magnet, it can't sense speed and it won't allow the motor to turn on or it might bump it, but then turn it off a second later. The magnet, very critical. So I supplied him with a magnet, a replacement magnet. He lost that magnet, so he put this one on. But there's a problem. The motor won't engage or it won't stay engaged. It might bump for a second, but then it turns off. He thought it was the depth of the magnet. Let me show you why he thought that. You look at this magnet sensor versus the location of the magnet, the depth of the magnet. You can see there's a lot of space there. So he thought maybe this magnet just wasn't long enough to trigger there on the sensor. But it turns out that's actually not the problem. And the way I was easily able to spot the problem is I have another one of these bucks. So I went and looked on it. And lo and behold, the magnet, well, it's about as far away the difference, though, is the location of the magnet. It's more towards the round part of this, where I think the sensor actually is, rather than the arm containing the wire. So all I really should need to do is move this magnet down a little bit so it's closer to the round part on this sensor, and that should allow things to work. I'll know if I move it, and then the speedometer starts working. Okay, so we see where it is now, just here on this end. I'm going to move it in just a bit, so let me kind of slink in here with my screwdriver. Now, I had to do this off camera because I couldn't adjust it and film it because I was in the way. But you see there, this is right in line with exactly where it was on my one in the basement that is working. Spin up this wheel, I can already hear the motor turning on. And look at this. Speedometer working, wheel spinning. Brakes working. Oh, I was hoping I could get that. Oh, so close. Look how close I was to getting that. Just the proper orientation. So this video letting you know not only do you have to keep an eye on this magnet, make sure it's properly tight, but you need to make sure it hasn't slipped down. And if you have to install one, make sure it's lined up properly with where it needs to be. E-mountain bikes, a lot of fun, more fun when they work.